Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're going to go over five worked examples to show you how to do problems involving PN junctions. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous videos covering the theory on forming a PN junction, forward and reverse bias, LEDs, and solar cells, because watching those videos will help you understand what we do in this video. So let's get started. Question 1a says, how is a PN junction formed? Well, remember a PN junction is formed when a piece of N-type material is grown together with a piece of P-type material. And this is what it looks like when it's been manufactured with the P-type and N-type side by side. Part B then says, how is the depletion region formed? Sketch a diagram to aid your explanation. Well, we're going to go through the steps of this that was outlined in the theory video for forming a PN junction, but we can start by saying that before the junction is made, we get something that looks like this. So we have our P-type material separate from the N-type material, and we have the electrons, which are the majority charge carriers in the N-type, and the holes labelled there, which are the majority charge carriers in the P-type. We can then say that when the N-type and P-type materials are brought close together, some free electrons from the N-type material diffuse across the junction and fill in some of the holes in the P-type material. So we can sketch this to show what's going on. So for the diffusion of electrons, we might draw something like this, where we've got our P-type material next to the N-type material. They've been brought close together, and the electrons from the N-type material are moving to fill some of the holes in the P-type material. We can then say that because the N-type has lost electrons, it becomes positively charged near the junction. The P-type, having gained electrons, becomes negatively charged near the junction. So we're saying that at the junction between the P-type and N-type material here, on the right-hand side of the junction within the N-type, that will become positively charged because it's actually lost electrons, so it's lost a negative charge, which is the same as gaining a positive charge. And on the left-hand side of the junction, we've got more negative charge, so this part near the junction will become negatively charged. And then we can say that due to this charge separation, a small potential barrier forms across the junction, i.e. because we've now got two oppositely charged regions, that creates an electric field which in turn creates a voltage or a potential difference. And this voltage tends to oppose any further movement of charge. We can say that the region around the junction consists of filled holes, i.e. no free charge carriers. This region is called the depletion region. So here's our final sketch of what this looks like. So we've got our N-type on the right, our P-type on the left, and there's our depletion region in the middle, i.e. the potential barrier, where no free charge carriers can move across. Question 2a says to sketch a circuit diagram to show a PN junction connected in forward bias. Well, remember in forward bias, our PN junction would look something like this, where we've got the negative terminal of our battery connected to the N-type, and we've got the positive terminal of the battery connected to the P-type. And you can see we've got a relatively small depletion region between the P and N-type materials there. It then says in part B, what effect does this have on the electric field in the PN junction? Well, remember the electric field is this thing in the middle that determines the size of the depletion region. So we can say that forward bias decreases the electric field in the PN junction. And remember this means that conduction can take place when something is connected in forward bias mode because the electrons in the N-type have enough energy from the battery to actually move across the junction, and holes in the P-type material also have enough energy to move from this side over to the negative terminal of the battery. And in this way, we get charge or electrons flowing around our circuit, which means that we have conduction. Question 3a says to sketch a circuit diagram to show a PN junction connected in reverse bias. So this is just the opposite to question 2. So if you sketch the PN junction in reverse bias mode, it might look something like this. So we've got the negative terminal this time connected to the P-type, and we've got the positive terminal connected to the N-type. So we've actually just swapped around the terminals there from what we had in question two. And this time you'll see the size of our depletion region is much larger than it was in question two where we had forward bias mode. And therefore in part B, it says, what effect does this have on the electric field in the PN junction? Well, we can say that reverse bias increases the electric field in the PN junction. Because remember, the electric field determines the size of the depletion region. So because the electrons in the N-type are going to be attracted to the positive terminal the battery and the holes in the p-type are going to be attracted towards the negative terminal of the battery and this way we say that no charge or no current can flow in the circuit and therefore when something is connected in reverse bias mode no conduction can take place question 4a says which mode does an led need to be connected in for it to work forward biased or reverse biased well remember an led is a forward biased pn junction diode so it needs to be forward bias in order for conduction to take place in a circuit where there is an LED. Part B then says to explain in terms of band theory how an LED emits photons. Well, this is a very common exam question and remember when it asks us to explain or describe something in terms of band theory, we need to use those three key words of electrons, valence band and conduction band. So firstly, we can say that when a battery is connected to an LED in forward bias mode, 
electrons in the n-type now have enough energy to overcome the potential difference across the junction and move towards the holes in the p-type. Similarly, the holes move from the p-type across the junction to the electrons in the n-type. When close, electrons can fall into the holes, and this means that they drop energy level from the conduction band to the valence band, otherwise known as recombination. So you can think about it as the electrons recombining with the holes. When this occurs, energy is released in the form of light, i.e. photons, Light can escape because the junction is very near the surface of the material. And if you were to sketch this situation for an LED, it would look like this. So here we have our conduction band at the top, we have our valence band down here, the lower energy level, and we have the electrons in the conduction band of the n-type material that can move towards the junction and therefore towards the p-type, and then we have the holes in the valence band of the p-type material that can move towards the n-type or the junction, and when the electrons in the conduction band at the junction fall into the holes in the valence band, this thing called recombination takes place, and the electrons basically fill the holes, and this loss of energy from the electrons dropping down an energy level will be emitted as light. And remember this light is emitted in the form of photons, which are particles of light. Lastly, question 5a says that a potential difference is produced across a solar cell when it absorbs photons. What name is given to this effect? Well, remember solar cells work in a sort of opposite way to how LEDs work. So we can actually produce a potential difference when light is absorbed by the solar cell. So the name given to this effect, remember, is the photovoltaic effect. Photo meaning light and voltaic referring to voltage. So we can take in light and produce a voltage from it. Part B then says to explain in terms of band theory how the potential difference is produced. Well remember, if we're trying to explain something in terms of band theory, we need to use the terms valence band, conduction band and electrons. So we can say for this that when light is instant on a solar cell, the light energy absorbed from the photons creates electron hole pairs. And then the potential barrier in the PN junction causes the electrons and holes to separate and flow around the circuit, creating a current and thus potential difference. And we could then connect a device into that circuit in order to power it using this potential difference. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Whoa.